Hey, what up, G Team and YouTube? It is Major G. Um, this time, I think I am actually relatively on time. Um, I didn't. <laughs> uh, apparently, Death Battle just came out with the brand new Death Battle, which is Thor versus Wonder Woman. Um, this is about three days old at the time I'm looking at it, so I'm relatively on time with this. Um, so I think Thor's been in a Death Battle before, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. He he was in a Death. Who was he fighting? I don't remember who Thor was fighting. Um, who who did Thor fight? I don't remember. Uh, let me see. I don't think they. I don't think they show it here. But um, I don't remember who Thor fought. But I'm pretty sure thought uh, uh, uh i'm pretty sure thor won that battle um i don't think it was against captain marvel captain marvel i don't believe or because i remember not, I'm, i remember not being all that surprised that thor won so i know it wasn't captain marvel um because captain marvel definitely he definitely would have let's see thor Raiden, that's who it was. Yeah, so he fought Raiden, which was yeah, that was like yeah, yeah. Thor wins, um, naturally, no surprise there. But this time, this time, he's taking on Wonder Woman. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta go with Wonder Woman on this one, uh, because Death Battle does every does everybody at their best, at their best potential. Wonder Woman could take on Superman, like, and Superman would mop the floor with Thor. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I gotta give it to Wonder Woman on this one. Um, it would probably be a close battle, but I would say Thor. I, sorry, I would say Wonder Woman would have would, would have this one, especially since Wonder Woman is used to taking on gods, and I'm pretty sure she has taken on gods and won. So, uh, uh, not to mention that the gods, that the the gods in Marvel, uh, the Asgardians, the Asgardians aren't even gods; they're aliens. So, uh, whereas Wonder Woman has literally take on, taken on literal gods. So I gotta give this to Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's gonna have this in the bag for sure. Faux show. Um. So, let's go ahead and get on with this. It's time for our death battle! Begin. Oh, wrong way. No, this way. I, I had it right. Oh! I forgot the most important part. I got so excited about this. Let's try this again. There we go. The different pantheons of gods and goddesses have always what been is right this? In conflict, and these heavenly what the wars heck? have lasted for centuries. Like with Thor, Norse champion of Asgard and son of Odin, and Wonder Woman, Greek warrior of the Amazons and daughter of Zeus. He's oh, she is a daughter of Zeus. And it's our job to analyze their weapons. Dude, she's a, oh, she's a demigod. It's over. It is over. It is over. She's got this. This is the realm eternal, root of the world tree and noblest of the nine dimensions, Asgard. Like a protector for your butt? Shush, shush, shush. Asgard. Since ancient times, this colorful realm has been inhabited by warriors. So Charmin made a joke about that, actually. I forgot about that. Charmin actually made a joke about it, and they had to make they had to uh they had to re they had to retract it. 
Then they are born anew with only vague memories of their previous lives. This is the cataclysmic event known Ragn as Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Yeah. And Asgard's newest king, the All-Father Odin, was determined to break this cycle. So he fathered the best oh, I didn't realize it was a cycle. The realms had ever seen. <laughs> the mighty Thor. Thor spent most of his life living among his people and defending his realm from its enemies. <laughs> oh, the ice shot is. Like, really good. He's their tank and DPS all rolled into one when it comes to raiding other realms. And boy, does he look the part. This guy is six feet six inches of pure muscle and possibly led because he somehow weighs 600. Oh, yeah, I think he was. Yeah, Thor I think I remember. He's trained by the best in Asgard and has proven his mettle across multiple worlds. He helped found the Avengers and has defeated everything from giants to demons to other gods. As a real life god, Thor is super strong, super fast, and super durable. And even on those rare occasions when he does get hurt, he patches up real quick with his healing. Oh, factor. nice. And of course, being the god of thunder lets him control lightning and even the earth itself. But Thor isn't complete without his iconic arsenal. He wears the belt of strength, which doubles his already impressive might. And he swings around the most awesome tiny little hammer you've ever seen. Mjolnir is an ancient weapon. 65 million years ago, it was forged by dwarves by harnessing a star. Its construction was so intense, it caused the star to explode, and its fiery remains eradicated the dinosaurs. Talk about metal! Speaking of metal, <laughs> Mjolnir is forged from Uru, an extremely durable iron-like ore that is highly susceptible to enchantment. Mjolnir in particular is enchanted to house a cosmic storm powerful enough to shake black holes. And yes, the wielders of Mjolnir can access the storm's powers, including Notice he said, and control over holders. Weapons. Never wanted anything so bad in my life. Unfortunately, only those the hammer deems worthy can right. actually wield it, or even pick it up for that matter. Right. You must be pure of heart and noble of mind, or else it won't even budge. Well, lucky for Thor, he's worthy of adding Mjolnir's awesome power to his own. And with their power, Thor can mind, Thor does have to be the only one. Him. Who can, uh, who can pick it up? tagged Quicksilver, who at his best can run around 670 million miles per hour. And Thor can move even faster than that when his hammer is dragging him around. Yeah, that's a thing. Thor yeah. doesn't really fly on his own in the same way people like Superman or Captain Marvel do. Instead, he literally <laughs> chucks his chucks hammer, his hammer. As hard yep. as he can and hangs on for dear life as it takes him for a ride. Thor has said Mjolnir is fast enough to reach the edge of the universe in 60 seconds. This means it can travel at least 350 trillion miles per hour. Wow. Or over 500,000 times the speed of light. Wow. Let go, Goldilocks. Hitting pavement at that speed might hurt even you. Yeah, he'd be fine. He can withstand a dip in the sun, where it can be over 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. And while he was knocked unconscious, he did survive a bomb capable of planet busting equal to a force of over 53 quadrillion megatons of TNT. Shoot. He lifted this giant ass snake. Look at that thing. The Midgard Serpent is massive, capable of wrapping around the entire Earth twice. It stretches nearly 900 miles wide and 50,000 miles long. By comparing it to the largest living snakes, the 550 pound green aconda, we can estimate the Midgard Serpent weighs about 17 trillion tons. Holy Hold crap, up, dude. I know my snakes, and it looks like that Mudguard Serpent is actually constricting the Earth. By squeezing prey, a snake can apply pressure 16 times. KO the weight. Phoenix Force? So sword didn't just lift a really oh, heavy snake. Oh, dear God. He outmatched 272 trillion tons of force. Uh, that is correct, Boomstick. God damn right. Oh, shit. I underestimated Thor. Unbelievable power Thor possesses. So much so that in fights with other godly beings, whole worlds can shatter. If it ever comes to it, he can even enter a state of warrior's madness. While he loses some control doing this, his power increases tenfold. Why did we put this guy up against Raiden again? Right? Well, <laughs> Thor's cocky attitude has put him in all kinds of trouble. He's even lost Mjolnir's power more than once as a result. Right. Yeah, the hammer isn't invulnerable, and if Thor is holding on to it, its enchantment can even be tricked. Like that one time the Hulk used his own hammer against him by moving his arm. Why are you hitting yourself? So to teach Thor a lesson in humility, Odin banished him to Earth, transforming him into a handicapped human. You right. call that a handicap? That's a limp. 
I'm over here with a friggin' shotgun for a leg, and I'm not even allowed to park in those special parking spaces. Still, it turns out sending four to Earth was all part of Odin's plan to alter the cycle of Ragnarok, as such a thing had never been done before. And it worked! 4,000 years after the previous Ragnarok, Armageddon was stopped for good, and the gods were free. All thanks to Thor, and a giant time-traveling floating sentient eyeball, but mostly Thor. Can't make this stuff up. What? I accept your surrender. <laughs> Legend has it that lost among the waves sits a solitary island called Themyscira, yep. shrouded in secrecy and inhabited solely by women. Hey Wiz, guess what's my new number one vacation spot? Hello, oh, nurse! <laughs> their paradise isle far from civilization, the women of Themyscira are more dangerous than you'd think. They are Amazons, immortal warriors created by the Olympian gods. Their mission? To spread the peace and justice of the gods to a barbarian world. And ship anything to you for free within two days. Oh my if god. You pay an annual fee. But a bunch of centuries later, they were kind of out of the loop. These chicks had never even heard of shotguns before. Until the day a military plane crashed near the island. Determined to reconnect with the world and establish peace once again, the Amazons held a tournament to select a representative. The final test requiring each lady to block a bullet from just a couple yards away. Damn, they don't mess around. The winner was one of their youngest, a brave woman known simply as Diana. Diana. And that's how she became the Wonder Woman. Due to her warrior heritage, Wonder Woman was trained from a very young age in just about every aspect of combat you can imagine. She ran for president? What is she gonna do on that island? She's a master with swords, axes, spears, bows, shields, yeah hell, and pretty much anything that isn't a gun. Her Amazon physiology grants her super strength, super speed, heightened wisdom, and the ability to heal from most wounds almost instantly. And she can fly, just like Superman. How else do you think she'd get around? An invisible jet? That's stupid! How'd you even remember oh where you parked it? To further improve her deadliness, she carries a rather unique arsenal, among which are her iconic bracelets of submission. Ah, that sounds like some weird BDSM shit. Well, they kind of were, but the universe has been reset more than enough times to change all that, thank God. Right. Anyway, those bracelets are her greatest tool for defense. Forged by the smith god Hephaestus using the remains of Zeus's legendary Aegis shield, the bracelets are impervious to nearly anything. Just they were made from. To avoid collateral damage, the bracelets also suppress some of Diana's strength. Taking them off vastly increases her godly power. Oh, she oh, didn't she know that. Use them to summon weapons like her magic sword. Also forged by Hephaestus, this sword's edge is so sharp that it can slice through microscopic atoms. This yeah. means a precision strike from Wonder Woman can cut through nearly any material, <laughs> including yeah, Superman. God makes some top-notch stuff. Wonder if he does commissions. Well, he's not responsible for Diana's final weapon, the Lasso of Truth. This unbreakable whip has the power to make anybody it touches tell the truth. Bad news for any cheating boyfriends she might have. What other depraved thoughts must you be thinking? God, your daughter's got a nice rack. <laughs> <laughs> of course, she doesn't need weapons to prove her awesome combat skills. According to Batman, Diana is the greatest melee fighter in the world, which is no small feat in a universe with people like Karate Kid, Deathstroke, and Batman himself. Hey, they hey, mentioned Karate Kid! Kid. Man, Daniel Sons really I... moved up in the world. The point is, Wonder Woman is a master martial artist who's trained all. I would life. still say Karate and Kid to take her off. No official birth date. We do know she was born during the age of the Roman Empire, specifically when they employed centurions. Including the additional time she spent fighting in Valhalla before going back in time, this means Wonder Woman must be about 3,000 years old. All things considered, she looks pretty damn good for her age. And that's more than enough time to become a master ass kicker. It also helps that she's pretty darn quick. She's kept pace with Superman and defeated the speedster Professor Zoom while blind. At one point, what? Wonder Woman was battling an ancient god who had fragmented himself into trillions of pieces, each spread to different corners of the universe. And while he summoned his pieces back at faster than light speed, Wonder Woman was able to stand in his way and block all of them. 
insane! I mean, she's moving so fast, there's like a bunch of her. Moving thousands of times the speed of light can do that. Yeah. In fact, she's moving so fast, she's probably breaking all manners of quantum physics. Yeah. She's also really Welcome to DC. strong. She punched Doomsday into literal dust. What? All the Earth around. The force needed to be <laughs> I knew it! She's got this! She's got this! The object's mass, including the Earth itself. Assuming Wonder Woman was pulling her fair share, this means she can lift 2.2 quintillion tons. She's got this! With stood multiple infinite mass punches. Yes! She's also incredibly tough. Nuclear explosions hardly even face her. Oh yeah, she punched a warhead and tanked it point blank. And then one day, Superman, who can see atoms, decided to split one to test her magic sword. Surprise, surprise, it literally blew up in their faces. <laughs> Waggy antics. Even more impressive was her fight with Zoom, in which she took several light speed punches, which, according to her fellow Justice League member The Flash, hit like a white dwarf star. That would equal 2 billion megatons of force. Unfortunately, I knew it. she's not invincible. She's got her own kryptonite, and it's a lot more common than radioactive alien rocks. Her durability holds up well against almost everything, except for piercing weapons. Which just seems like an unacceptable weakness when you're that strong. Knives, swords, spears, any kind of blade will do the trick. But especially bullets, which is probably why she's gotten so good at blocking them with those bracelets. Unfortunately for swordsmen and sharpshooters, Diana doesn't go down easily. In fact, a good stabbing is more than likely just gonna piss her off. And that's when you learn just how dangerous Wonder Woman can really be. Woo! Oh, it's over. Wonder Woman's got this. I knew it. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, all this talk of godly people makes me want some godly food. Over the past five years, Blue Apron has created over 1,000 recipes. This October, Blue Apron is celebrating its fifth anniversary by bringing back its top 20 recipes from the past five years. All chosen by you, the Blue Apron community. Keeping things fresh, Blue Apron normally doesn't repeat recipes within one calendar year, which makes this limited time offer something special. Blue Apron costs less than $10 a meal per person, which is a good deal. You can even customize your recipes for each weekly delivery. It's all about giving you fresh recipes to explore as you learn how to cook each new dish. Every meal comes with an easy to follow recipe anybody can follow to whip up your new favorite meal. They've even got Boomstick hooked. He's off cooking his meal to eat during the fight right now. Check out this week's menu and get $30 off your first meal with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash battle. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. Your favorite Blue Apron recipes are back on the menu. That's blueapron.com slash battle. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. But right now, it's time for a death battle! No man can enter the Mascara unannounced. Stand down, wayward maiden. This sort of thing never turns out well for women like yourself. <laughs> oh shoot, she's not gonna appreciate oh. that. I don't think you've ever known a woman like me. Oh nice, Wonder Woman. Is that Wonder Woman you said? Incredible. Five bucks as she picks up both the Time to stop holding back, Diana.
abandon. Form this guided fool. Feel heaven's wrath! Oh, really? They went one punch, man? each other in some surprising ways. Their weapons were enchanted, their years of experience were similar, and even their super modes did almost the same sort of thing. But Lady Wonder had a couple big things going for her, like her speed. Sure, Thor's fast enough to tag Quicksilver and his travel speed. She went up against a flash. It, but Wonder Woman's shown that she's even more stupid fast in combat over and over again. Such as when she blocked trillions of god shards flying at her from the edges of the universe, most likely faster than any speed Mjolnir was capable of. She was even able to catch Zoom in her lasso, despite how he wasn't just running ahead of her in physical space, but he was also ahead of her in time. Wrap your noggin around that one. <laughs> Flash broke it. The difference in strength was a different story. In fact, when comparing their earth and snake feats, she was 8,000 times stronger than him. But the final nail in Thor's coffin was their choice of weaponry. Mjolnir may have been tough for Diana to defend against, but it couldn't exploit her weakness to piercing weapons. Meanwhile, Diana's magic sword could slice at a microscopic level, yep. something Thor couldn't possibly be prepared to defend against. You could have skin so tough that you can take a bath in the sun no problem, but it won't do a damn thing to a blade that can literally sever your atoms. Ultimately, while many of their talents were evenly matched, Diana's speed, strength, and weaponry proved too much for Thor Odinson. Yep, he was done, Thor. The winner is Wonder oh Woman. God. Done, Thor. Oh my god. Stick around, we're about to announce the combatants for the next death battle. And if you want to watch exclusive commentary on this episode, click that little box over there and start a first membership trial. Should try to grab one of these shirts, too. Ishigo! What? Thank god. Versus my dude, Naruto? Really? Ooh. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. So, how about that Wonder Woman versus Thor fight? I called it, I called it, I called it. I knew Wonder Woman was going to come out on top. Uh, primarily because she's, she's, uh, I feel like she's gone up against stronger people than Thor. Um, because Thor is, in fact, let's see, because Thor's race, or Thor, the, uh, what was it, the Asgardians, the Asgardians are considered to be like aliens in the Marvel Universe. I think they left that out. But um, the Asgardians in Marvel are considered to be aliens and not, in fact, actual gods. Whereas I believe the ones in DC have... There is no... There is nothing saying that they're not gods. Like, they are gods, but there's nothing saying that they aren't gods, unlike the Asgardians, um, who are just ancient powerful uh alien beings who may or may not have forgotten their heritage um so i mean there's that there's the fact that like freaking wonder woman has like she's she's a warrior she's a trained warrior she's been you know that's all she's done all her life like thor's just kind of yeah thor's been trained by people and uh 
but like his main strategy is to just go in there and just start like swinging his hammer and that's pretty much it uh like basically being kind of like a bro almost uh whereas wonder woman just like she's she's a strategist like she's a true true warrior she knows how to use all types of weapons all you know different forms of martial arts um and um yeah i gotta give him credit where credit is due though they did mention my boy karate kid gotta give him credit for that they mentioned my boy karate kid speaking of which guys you guys obviously know he exists come on let's get the karate kid versus shang chi battle going on come on we need that um that said i highly doubt batman's claim i would never say that Wonder Woman is a better fighter, a better melee fighter, I should say. I would never say that Wonder Woman is a better melee fighter than Karate Kid. And that is purely because Karate Kid's ability is that he is the best melee fighter there is. So, uh, yeah, t yeah, gotta... I, I got. I'm gonna doubt that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna doubt that. Cause especially since Batman doesn't. Batman knows Wonder Woman. He knows Diana Prince. He's spent time with her. He's seen her at her best and at her worst. Batman's maybe come across Karate Kid maybe once or twice. I would never. I I wouldn't take Batman's word on that. You know. Uh, in terms of, in you know, com I would ne I wouldn't compare anybody to Karate Kid in terms of DC because Karate Kid is the best fighter uh, in all of comic though, uh, which is why I would love to see him take part in a death battle. Um, and so yeah, that's why I totally agree. I had a feeling. I had a feeling that was going to be the case. Um, you know, the the people that she usually goes up against are on average, just stronger. Yeah, Marvel has godlike beings, like people that are just completely broken. But these are pow these are people with whose powers are broken. And I'm referring to like uh, uh, I'm referring to people like Franklin Richards and Scarlet Witch when I think of people like that. Um, possibly even the Sentry. Um, but like the majority of people are not on that just nowhere near that level of strength um like in terms of physical force i don't think there's real besides maybe century there's not really anybody who can stand up to the powerhouses of superman captain marvel uh dark side uh uh the monitor and anti-monitor like these like these are the Flash, the freaking Flash. <laughs> I mean, like these, uh, John Jones. Like I'm just pulling these names out. John freaking Jones, John Jones. Uh, like these guys are just on a completely different level. And there's more than there's like that's more than five right there. Uh, Superboy Prime. Like the, these are uh, these are people that, uh, unlike Marvel. You come across more than once. They come, you know, they're 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 people that are that are almost common, um, that are commonplace uh, in terms of how powerful they are. Like it's, you know, you come across these people often. Whereas in Marvel, you know, you, you might have the Hulk, but uh, I mean, there's Hulk, there's Thor, um, and that's basically it, pretty much, when it comes to power. Um, whereas you got Wonder Woman, Superman, uh, uh, Sentry never really does anything. Like, does, let's be honest. Sentry, yeah, Sentry is probably the most powerful being in all of comics, um, in terms of pure power. But the guy never really does anything. Um, like, he hardly ever shows up. So, uh, you know, whereas, you know, you guys, you're Superman, you're Darkseid, you're, like, Captain Marvel, these are regular, these guys show up on the regular. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, good work, Death Battle, on this. Uh, once again, please, please, please put Karate Kid in a Death Battle. Um, I was originally thinking Iron Fist, but apparently he, there are better fighters than him. Uh, and people have mentioned that Shang-Chi is a better fighter than him. So, 
I want Karate Kid to go up go, go up against Marvel's best when it comes to uh, combat. So um, that I would love to see. Um, let's go ahead and make that happen. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Um, and until next time, uh, be excellent to one another and party on dudes. Oh. Yo. Yo. Yo.